Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I just read, I, okay, I have brought with me today my three new books, which I'm feeling like I'm gonna have to find some new books, you guys. I already don't love this believing in myself. So I put it to the side and I started reading from the Daily Stoic because I really, really, really want to love this book, okay? I really want to get into this book. I thought last year when I read it that I was going to really like it, but I was re reading this <laughs> meditation. I'm not going to read it again, okay? But it was about, uh, it, was, it says the Daily Stoic, January 16th, never do anything out of habit. And it was about changing habits, okay? And it says in here, in fact, we are studying philosophy. And I was like, I didn't realize I was studying philosophy. I thought I was just reading daily meditations. So it goes in this whole thing and says that you should basically uh, like break structure and tradition and habit about everything, which I'm not a believer in. But I ended up doing this meditation and it was like six minutes long and I just got laughing so hard because I was like, what am I even talking about at this point? So anyway, we're gonna put that book to the side. Now, I'm a little bit more hopeful with A Year of Positive Thinking, Daily Inspiration, Wisdom, and Courage by Cindy Spiegel. Please be good today. I need a good meditation in my life and not something like, okay, here we go. Oh, my glasses. Maybe I need a sip of coffee first. Maybe that's what's going on. All right. Okay, please be good. January 16th, you can begin again. There will be times when you've come as far as you can, when your heart is broken open and you see no way through. Did I do this one already? I feel like I did this one already. Uh, when those moments present themselves to you, sit quietly, courageously, feel what you feel, and then, and only then, let go as grace, grace, gracefully as you can. Grace is knowing for certain that you will inve inevitably be hurt again and knowing just as certainly that you are strong, you are resilient, and all of it will make you more beautiful. It is only through our brokenness that our light can shine. You will begin again. Um, okay, so I really, really like this meditation. And no, I don't think I have read this on here. Um, <clears throat> you know, I am such a believer in turning our wounds into wisdom. Like, I really, really, really firmly believe that. that and, and that was a quote that I heard from Oprah years ago. That, you know, it's not just like the Maya Angelou saying, which apparently I got wrong, but that when you're going through... A tragedy in your life, look up and say thank you because you're about to learn a very valuable lesson. Which I guess the real quote is, when going through a tragedy, look up and say thank you because this too shall pass. Which I equally like that meditate or that quote. But Oprah also said turning your wounds into wisdom. And one of the things that I have learned, like maybe especially being sober and being in recovery, is that those things that we go through in our lives are later going to be lessons that we can help and teach to other people. Everything that I've learned in my life, everything that I say on this channel, every piece of wisdom that I've ever received or that I have ever spouted off on this, as if you want to say it's wisdom, it's something that I have gotten from somebody else and I'm just passing that on, you know? In my vlogs at night, I always talk about well, not every night, but most nights I say, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And um, it was, and I used to say, um, um, I hope you have an amazing day today unless, unless you choose otherwise. What did I used to say? So this is a friend of mine that I know that's sober. And every time, um, oh, I know what it is. Every, and every time I see her, she always says to me, um, have, a, have an amazing day today unless you have other plans. Basically meaning it's up to you what kind of day you want to have, right? So all of these kind of like mottos and slogans that people have said to me through the years, she's the same one that says to me, if nobody else told you this today, I love you. And my old sponsor, whenever I talk to him, he always says, um, at, before, right before we get off the phone, he's like, uh, hey buddy, just wanted you to know, me and God love you if nobody else does. He always says that to me and it means so much to me, you know? And, um, and I think that's one thing I've learned is that um, we can choose to uh, uplift people or bring people down. It's really kind of like, what do we choose in that moment, you know? So I love this meditation because I think that when, we're, when we have uh, been hurt in life or, you know, when we have fallen on our face, the getting up, the, the repairing through that, you know, they, they talk about like when you uh, lift weights to build muscle, that you tear the muscle down to build it back up. And I think that emotionally that is what we do as well. But we have to be open to the healing process, right? Have you ever like, um, like equally heard two stories, right? You'll hear somebody that has like, um, 
Like, I feel like I know a lot of people in my life that have had hip replacements, right? So I'll have friends of mine that'll be like, yeah, my dad had a hip replacement. And I'll be like, well, how's it going and stuff? And they'll say, um, you know, like, well, he is just like, he's in, you know, physical therapy, but like, he won't do any of the things that they're suggesting. He doesn't even show up to his appointments half the time. At home, he won't walk, he won't practice. So he's not getting any better, right? And then I'll have friends of mine that I'll say like, oh, they'll say, oh, my mom had a hip replacement. I'm like, well, how did, how's it going? Is she doing okay? And they'll say, she's doing great. You know, she's supposed to go to physical therapy once a week, but she's been going three times a week. She loves her physical therapist. She's been going swimming. That's been really helping. She's been walking at home. You know, at first she's walked down the driveway and then now she's down the block and she walks back and forth, you know, and it's like people really push themselves because they want to grow physically. You know, I've known both of those stories. I've had both of those stories. And, um, or I've, I've, I've not had that. I've heard that, both of those stories, you know? And it's like, who's going to heal and get better first? And we are really the ones that stand in, in the way of that. I'm not trying to in any way, I'm just using that as an example, by the way, okay? I'm not trying to minimize anybody's physical pain. And I know that often when we're going through excruciating physical pain, it's really hard to get there. You know, when I had my back and my leg pain, it was like, I, I was kind of at the point where I didn't really want to go to physical therapy, but I was willing to do whatever because I wanted to feel better. I think that on an emotional level, that's where we have to get as well. We have to get to a point where it's like, I don't really care. And instead of and giving up, because I think so many people just give up and become stuck, right? I don't want, I don't want to get there. I've been there at points in my life before. I've been there where I have been emotionally stuck, where I just felt like I could not move on. I just, I really felt like I could not move on. And what I learned was I just had to put one foot in front of the other, that eventually things were going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You know, whatever we're going through in our lives, hopefully, and I don't want to say this 100% because I don't know, but hopefully this won't be the worst thing that you ever go through in your life. There's been so many things I've gone through, so many tragedies in my life that have occurred that when I look back on them, I think, you know, I made it through that. I, 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 am affected by it, you know, like I still remember that today and I've learned from it and I've grown from it, but I'm okay. Like eventually life got better, you know, maybe not five days down the road, maybe not six weeks down the road, maybe not seven years down the road, but you know, eventually things got better, you know, grieving is a good example of this. I still miss my mom. I think about her a lot, you know, um, it's hard not to when I live in the condo that she used to live in, but when the way that I think about my mom today is not the way that I thought about my mom when she first passed. You know, I was numb. I didn't even really know how to verbalize my emotions or my feelings. I just missed her like crazy. Year two, year three, year four, a song would come on the radio and I was a bawling mess. Year five, year six, year seven, I'd look at pictures, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And I still like, I haven't even watched this video that my cousin gave me of the wedding. This is the only thing I, I haven't heard my mother speak since she passed away because I don't have any audio recordings of her or anything. And I think I'm kind of a little bit afraid because I don't know how I'll respond to that. But through the years, things got better, you know? And and, and I, I think my mom would want that. I don't think my mom would want me to be a st in a state of complete grieving for 20 years on end. I miss my mother, you know? I, I I've had people say to me when I talk about her in videos and stuff, like, my God, you've talked about your mom. She's been gone for almost 13 years. Like, move on. who says that to somebody? You know what I mean? Like, she was my mother. She's the only mother that I've ever had besides my stepmother. And, you know, like, I'm never going to have another one. I have a fantastic mother-in-law and I have a fantastic stepmother, but I don't have a mother in my life anymore, you know? And it would be the same way if I lost a friend. Nobody can replace that friend. Nobody can replace, you know, a pet or anything like that. So it's like... I think we have to allow ourselves to feel those emotions. This has kind of gone from doop, 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 this uh, video, hasn't it? You know, and allow ourselves to feel those things. And, and things get better over time. If you're sitting out there today and you're struggling through something and it's something that you are like, I don't think things are going to get better. Things will get better. They will eventually. But the things that seem so trivial at the time are like, eating healthy, you know, like, and I'm not talking about just like having a salad. I'm talking about sometimes the things that do better for us are eating foods of our soul, like ice cream and cookies. That's not horrible sometimes. Now every day, yeah, we don't want to do that. But if you're having a down day to eat some, a bowl of ice cream and cookies, no, that's not horrible. Take a bath, you know, do, get, get up and do your hair one day and see if it makes you feel better. You know, put one foot in front of the other, start listening to some music that makes you happy. Watch a TV show that makes you happy. When my mom passed away, hell, I was wanting to listen to all kinds. I used to listen to this song called Bye Bye by Mariah Carey that whenever it came out after my mom passed away and it was like, 
I wish you were here when all this stuff happened. And I'm like, why? one day I was like, why am I listening to this song? It's just making me so sad, you know? My mom lost a lot of people in her life and her life continued to go on and grow and she enjoyed her life. She would not want me to sit here and be sad every single day. She wouldn't. I know that, you know? Am I happy that I allowed myself to feel my feelings and emotions? Absolutely. Am I also happy that I allowed myself to put one foot in front of the other and continue to move on? Yes. I did it through my breakups. I did it through, uh, you know, getting sober. I've done it a lot in my life. And you can too. Put one foot in front of the other, you know, and you will begin to begin again, like it says in, in the meditation. And you'll begin to grow and your life will look different. It might not have the same cast of characters in it. It might not have the same, you know, place. It might not be the same apartment or house. Like that was so hard for me when I moved out of places, you know, but it's like my life looks different today. But it, it looks better, too, you know? I, I miss a lot of people in my life that aren't there. You know, I've talked a lot about this in the vlog in the past, and I'm so glad I did. My vlog has been so cathartic for me, which do the same thing or do journaling. It can be cathartic for you, too. But when I would talk about, you know, it's really hard when one day you wake up and everybody that defines your life, everybody that was your past is gone. Where's your past? Like, that was something that I kind of had to, you know, come to a realization with, that, like, my cousin, my dad, my stepmom is it. And then there was like the period where I met Tanya, which was like my best friend, like 24 years ago. And then people from there on, I have a lot of people that love me today. I have a lot of people that want to spend time with me. You know, I want to continue to grow. I want my, I want to continue to have my life go on and have a good life. And I want that for you too. And um, sometimes we have to push ourselves to put one foot in front of the other and say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to get up. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to do my hair. I'm going to put an outfit on that makes me feel good, makes me feel happy. And I'm going to have a meal that makes me happy. I'm going to call a friend I haven't talked to in a while. I'm going to buy myself some flowers or do something that makes me happy today. You know, even if it's just putting on a perfume that we like or a cologne, you know, but doing something to push ourselves in the right direction and taking one step forward and you can put one step and then another one. You know, my old sponsor used to say to me, um, whenever I would say, Oh, I can't do this. It's too big. I, I think this way a lot with like weight loss, you know, he would say, um, do you know how you eat an elephant? <laughs> this is like a recovery motto. Okay. It's not, you wouldn't truly eat an elephant, but he would say, you know how you eat an elephant? And I would say, no, how? And he'd say one bite at a time. So anyway, let me know what you think about those meditations. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.